Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Good morning, Judge. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry about the circumstances, but we'll get through it. Um, I wanted to talk to you this morning about guns and go back to Roe Ro v. Wade, if I might. Mm -hmm. um, my office wrote the assault weapons legislation in 1993. It was law from 94 to 2004. And it essentially prohibited uh, the transfer, sale, and manufacture of assault weapons. It did not, at the time, affect possession. Um, I happen to believe that it did work and that it was important. And I have watched case after case, and I think I mentioned earlier, school shootings, which are just, I, I never thought this would happen in our country that someone would bring a semi-automatic assault weapon into a school and just mow down children and staff. And so I've been very interested in your thinking um, on assault weapons. Um, you specifically argued that the D.C. assault weapons ban was unconstitutional, and I think because you said wep these weapons were in common use. What did you base your conclusion that assault weapons are in common use? And what evidence or study did you use to do that? Thank you, Senator Feinstein, for the question. And um, I understand, of course, your role on that issue and your long leadership on that issue, and appreciate that. Uh, I faced a decision where uh, as in every other decision just about on the D.C. Circuit, I had to follow precedent, precedent of the Supreme Court. Uh, I don't get to pick and choose which Supreme Court precedents I get to follow. I follow them all. And so in the Second Amendment context, the Supreme Court in the Heller decision, uh, written by Justice Scalia, had held that there was an individual right to keep and bear arms. And then in explaining um, what that meant and what exceptions would be allowed to that right. Justice Scalia's opinion for the court in part three of the opinion went through, this does not mean that there's no gun regulation permissible. So that was an important part of the opinion, part three of the Supreme Court's opinion, where it pre-identified uh, a number of exceptions that would be allowed. Uh, felon in possession laws, concealed carry, uh, laws possession of the mentally ill, possession of guns in schools, possession in certain kinds of buildings. He pre-identified that. As to the weapons, uh, the, the way I understood what he said there and what was said in the McDonald case later was that dangerous and unusual weapons could be prohibited. And what he referred to specifically is machine guns could be prohibited. So it's very important to recognize under the Heller decision, machine guns can be prohibited. And they, machine they were in the Firearms Act a long time ago. Yes, machine and guns that's are, have been prohibited. Yes, Senator. And Justice Scalia's opinion did not disturb that long-standing regulation. In fact, specifically reaffirmed that machine guns could be prohibited. The court in Heller, the Supreme Court, upheld uh, or struck down a D.C. ban on uh, handguns, most of which are semi-automatic. I don't mean, let me interrupt you because I don't, I think we're on totally different wavelengths. I'm talking about your statement on common use as common use being a justification and assault weapons are not in common use. And Justice Scalia's opinion used that phrase. Then I think the next sentence of the opinion talked about dangerous and unusual weapons. And the court in Heller itself, the Supreme Court, struck down a D.C. ban on handguns. Now, most handguns are semi-automatic. That's something that not everyone appreciates. Most, most, most handguns are semi-automatic. And the question came before us of semi-automatic rifles, and the question was, can you distinguish as a matter of precedent? Again, this is all about precedent for me, I'm trying to read exactly what the Supreme Court said, and if you read the McDonald case, and I concluded that 
uh, it could not be distinguished uh, as a matter of law, semi-automatic rifles from, uh, from semi-automatic handguns. And semi-automatic rifles are widely possessed in the United States. There are millions and millions and millions yeah. of semi-automatic rifles that are possessed. So that seemed to fit common use and not being an un a dangerous and unusual weapon. That's, that was the basis of my dissent. The, in a nutshell, the basis of my dissent was I was trying to follow strictly and carefully the Supreme Court precedent. And you, you've, I know you've read the opinion. You're saying the numbers determine common use? Common use is an activity. It's not common storage or possession. It's use. So what you said was that these weapons are commonly used. They're not. They're widely possessed in the United States, Senator, and uh, they, are, they are used and possessed. But the, the question is, are they a dangerous and unusual? They, they're certainly dangerous. All weapons are dangerous. Are they unusual? And uh, given how prevalent they are in the United States, uh, it seemed under Justice Scalia's test, if you look at the majority opinion in McDonald, the same thing. I want to reiterate. The Supreme well, Court made clear that machine guns can be banned. Machine me, guns can be banned. Let me speak to you. I'm talking about the Heller case. Let me be specific. Mm -hmm. And you specifically argued um, that it was un uh, unconstitutional to defend assault weapons because they are, uh, to ban assault weapons because they are in common use. And that, I believe, was uh, your dissent in the case. Yes, and I was referring... Uh, to some semi some kinds of semi-automatic rifles that are banned by DC are in w wide, uh, widely owned in the United States. And that seemed to be the test that the Supreme Court had set forth in the Heller and McDonald cases. In other words, if a type of firearm is widely owned in the United States. Now, whether I agree with that test or not was not the issue before me. I have to follow the precedent of the Supreme Court as it's written. And uh, that's what I tried to do in that case. It's a very long opinion. I also made clear, Senator Feinstein, at the end of the opinion, I'm a, I am a native of this area. I'm a native of an urban, suburban area where, we've, where I grew up in a city plagued by gun violence and gang violence and drug violence. So I fully understand, as I explained in the opinion, the importance of this issue. I specifically referenced that Police Chief Kathy Lanier's goals of reducing gang and gun violence was something uh, I certainly applauded, but that I had to follow the precedent of the Supreme Court in that case. And as I read it, that's what it said. I'm sorry. How do you reconcile what you've just said with the hundreds of school shootings using assault weapons that have taken place in recent history? How do you reconcile that? Senator, of course, the, the violence in the schools is something we all uh, detest and want to do something about. And there are lots of efforts, I know, underway to uh, make schools safer. I know, I know at my girls' school, they do a lot of things now that are different than they did just a few years ago in terms of trying to harden the school and make it safer for everyone. Uh, guns, uh, handguns and semi-automatic rifles are weapons used for hunting and self-defense. Uh, but as you say, Senator, you rightly say, they're used in a lot of violent crime and cause a lot of deaths. Handguns are used in uh, lots of uh, uh, crimes that result in death, and so are semi-automatic rifles. That's one of the, that's what makes this issue difficult. As I said in the last two pages of my dissent in Heller, I fully understand the gang violence, gun violence, drug violence that has plagued various uh, cities, including Washington, D.C. This was known as the murder capital of the world uh, for a while, this city. And that was uh, a lot of handgun violence uh, at the time. And so I, I, I understand the issue, but I, as a judge, my job, as I saw it, was to follow the Second Amendment opinion of the Supreme Court, whether I agreed with it or disagreed with it. At the end of the opinion, I cited uh, Justice Kennedy's Texas versus Johnson quote, which I read yesterday as the guiding light for the for the uh, lower court judges and all judges. Let